Okay, um, this should be the final part of Core 5A on a Quab correlation test, and we will see uh, a special case, in fact, of the Quab test, which is the Quab for regression. So, uh, Quab regression is useful when you have multiplex networks, when you have several types of links between the same uh, nodes set. Uh, you make some regression to investigate the influence between several links uh, types on, uh, um, on another network. Basically, the question could be, are the relations that I have in my network G1, G2, and G3 may contribute to the relation in my, uh, let's say, uh, base network uh, G? Uh, graphically, this is uh, about wondering if the links here can be correlated or uh, influenced by the links of this network, this network, and this network. In fact, this is very similar to a multiple linear regression when you want to explain a variable by a combination of some other variable. When you run the net lm function of uh, the package uh, SNA of R, you've got uh, this kind of output. Um, it's a little bit different than for a correlation, but uh, you still have the same kind of uh, information. So this is the residuals of uh, your regression. So this is uh, the error that you commit by uh, trying to estimate your network by uh, a model. Uh, when you try to estimate a network with uh, three networks, like in the previous example, you have four lines of results, one for each variable, x1, x2, x3, and one for a constant term called intercept. You've got the estimated value, the value of your model here, and the, you have the p-value here that uh, help us to uh, reject uh, the influence of the confidence we have in the influence of a variable. Uh, in addition to the previous results, you've got two uh, interesting values. Uh, residual standard error, which is uh, the standard deviation of residuals, the error, how it is widespread. Uh, around your model, so uh, the fewer the residual standard error, the better the fit of your model to your data. Um, the other measure is the multiple R squared, which is uh, the proportion of variance of your data that you have been able to explain by your model. In this case, the model is a combination of uh, the variable x1, the graph g1, the graph g2, and the graph g3. Okay, so finally, um, there is a warning in the manual page of the QAP function in R that warns us uh, about the use of uh, QAP correlation test. Uh, so, uh, the first point is that the QAP test should not be interpreted as evaluating uh, underlying structural differences. So, uh, basically, it means that uh, when the identity of your nodes matters, for example, you've got some nomination for name generators in social science, when you've got surveys and so on, uh, you, you, you can use a QAP, a QAP test. Um, the second point is that um, the significance of QAP test uh, does not imply that your network is uh, very different from any other network with the same global properties, so a number of nodes, density, and so on. In fact, it does not say that your network is special. It only uses the different possible labelings to say if it will uh, have an influence on the correlation between two networks. So, it depends really on your research question. If you are in a context when your nodes um, have an identity, to identify a relation between two nodes means that there is um, a nomination, a labeling that matters to define a link between two nodes. In this case, a QAP is very useful to, to, um, to evacuate some uh, biases of um, data collection. Uh, in our case, for our business network, uh, when a firm owns another firm, uh, you can say that the firm chooses another firm to be subsidiary. This is a labeled relationship, so the QAP test will hold if you keep the same nodes for, for networks of firms. But in case of networks of, uh, let's say, uh, city or uh, large urban region 
or some more aggregated uh, spatial units, uh, you have to be more careful because um, this is not a labeled dimension anymore. This is not a label relationship. You cannot say that Rome chose Paris to interact. It's not uh, as um, easily uh, seen as in uh, the firm, the networks of firm. So be cautious for networks of cities or networks of large urban region because there is no labeling anymore. So we, we won't say that quap is forbidden, but you have to use it with care because it's not a labeled relationship anymore. And the conceptors of the quap test warn us about uh, the use of quap for non-labeled uh, relationships. Uh, finally, uh, some limitation of QAP, so uh, no structural difference detection. Uh, to do that, you can ch check the GS core function of package SNA with R, the computation cost. Uh, it doesn't handle the interference between predictors, so between um, terms when you make uh, regression. Uh, cross terms uh, are not handled. And there is no standard error on the sample estimate because uh, the error is, cons is uh, measured on the null distribution, not on the actual uh, correlation. Mm, so that's it for the calls. We've seen uh, some elements about uh, statistics on networks and uh, what, what, why we should use QAP to remove the network's effects and dependence of observations. We, see, uh, we have seen correlation and regression. And uh, that's it pretty much for the course. You can see tutorials for crap uh, application with hair. And uh, these two uh, links are pretty useful to, um, to understand the, the issues with QAP. Uh, the main publication should be predicting with networks non-parametric multiple regression analysis of dyadic data by Crackard. And uh, you can also check the manual page of R for uh, QAP test warning uh, that we have just seen. Okay, that's it for this course. Thank you.